The size and scale of the universe is one of those things that us humans have trouble visualising. We often compare familiar sizes to each other with images like these. We can use this method for planets, stars and galaxies, but what about the space in between? Time or speed being used as a dimension for distance is much easier to understand than an arbitrary value with no basis in nature unlike the day and night cycle we all experience. Half a day's drive, or 20 minutes down the road, are popular phrases that you hear often, and the human brain doesn't need to visualise time and speed in the same way as size to grasp it easily. One astronomical unit, or AU, is the average distance from Earth to the Sun, 149 million kilometres. The parsec is also measured in astronomical units. One parsec is equivalent to about 206,000 astronomical units. That's about 3.26 light years. Now the light year is the distance that light travels in a vacuum in one Julian year. It is perhaps the most popular unit because the speed of light is constant and is found in nature just like the day and night cycle on Earth so we don't need to visualise light speed as much as the astronomical unit. I will be using the light year to explain distances in this video, but keep an eye out for the parsec values on screen if you prefer those. Let's start with something familiar. A human person is said to walk, on average, 1.39 metres per second. That's quick enough to get you to the bathroom from anywhere in your house in under 20 seconds. Travelling outside of your home takes longer, so we use the kilometre. 1,000 metres is one kilometre. The Earth is 40,075 kilometres in circumference, which means it would take about 334 days to walk around it, ignoring oceans, mountains and having to sleep and such. Light zips around the Earth at around 7.5 times per second. It spends about 1.26 seconds travelling from the moon to your eyes. It takes 8 minutes for light leaving the surface of the sun to reach us here on Earth. That means if the sun exploded, we would only find out 8 minutes later. And it's too late by then, I'd say. Our nearest star, Alpha Centauri C, aka Proxima Centauri, is about 4.3 light years away, meaning it takes 4.3 light years for us to find out if that star has exploded, compared to our own sun at 8 minutes. NASA's Voyager 1 spacecraft, the first spacecraft to ever leave our solar system, is currently travelling away from the sun at a rate of 17 kilometres per second. If the Voyager were to travel to Proxima Centauri, at this speed, it would take over 73,000 years to arrive. Our galaxy is about 100,000 light years in diameter and has roughly 100 to 400 billion stars with other estimates in the trillions. The distance to the galactic core of the Milky Way from Earth is about 27,000 light years. Current estimates put the number of planets in our galaxy at around 800 billion to 3 trillion planets. Our favourite galaxy, other than our own home Milky Way, is Andromeda. It is about 2.5 million light years away from us. Andromeda measures at 220,000 light years across, which is more than double our own Milky Way galaxy. The Canis Major Dwarf Galaxy has in recent times taken the lead as nearest galaxy to Earth at only 25,000 light years from us, compared to the previous title holder, Sagittarius Dwarf Spheroidal Galaxy, which is about 70,000 light years away from us. The Milky Way and Andromeda galaxies are part of an approximate 54 galaxy cluster called the Local Group. These galaxies are gravitationally bound to each other with the gravitational centre being somewhere between the Milky Way and Andromeda galaxies. The local group has a diameter of 10 million light years 
and is part of the Virgo supercluster, a structure consisting of at least 100 galactic clusters, like the local group, which form the web-like structures we'll see as we move farther out into the universe. The Virgo supercluster spans 100 million light years in diameter, or 33 megaparsecs. The Laniakea supercluster was defined in September 2014. It appends the Virgo supercluster to include the Hydra Centaurus supercluster, Parvo Indus supercluster, and the Southern supercluster. It contains over 100,000 galaxies alone compared to the 54 that the local group has. It spans 520 million light years across, compared to the local group at only 10 million, or the Milky Way at 100,000 light years. Coming close to what science can say about the universe, as we see farther and farther away, we see earlier and earlier in time. This means that we can never know what the universe looks like right now, without waiting for the light to carry the information to us. This has some interesting implications, as it gives us the ability to look far back into the past, at very close to the beginning of the universe. But it also limits us to a view of the past, with the current state of the universe shrouded by the speed of light. Side note, the speed of light can change if it passes through a material. Because of this confusion, I find it better to imagine the speed of light redefined as the speed of causality or the speed of information. The universe is an estimated 13.8 billion years old. But that does not mean space isn't bigger than that. To explain how this is possible, we require dark energy and a redefining of light speed and space. I'll do a video on these topics in the future, but I will summarize it quickly for you today. Light speed is the speed that an object with no mass, the photon, will travel in a vacuum through space. But the better definition is the max speed anything can transfer information through space at. Space itself, on the other hand, is not a thing that moves through itself, so it is not limited to that speed. The Hubble constant is a unit of measurement for the rate to which the universe is expanding, or if you prefer, the rate to which space is being generated. And that's a uniform expansion across the entire universe, not just the edge of space. Proposed by Edwin Hubble, the famous astronomer, who found that the farther galaxies are away from Earth, the faster they appear to be moving. We have calculated the Hubble constant to be around 71 kilometers per second per megaparsec. Or for every megaparsec of space that exists, 71 kilometers of new space is being generated every second. This is actually an acceleration, not a coasting speed. If more space exists than one second ago, then we will have more megaparsecs to add to this calculation for the next second, so each step in an exponential growth of the previous step. To visualize, a photon of light has had 13.8 billion light years to travel through space. During that time, the space between a photon and its final resting point has expanded in length because of more space constantly being created. The photon must now travel across more than 13.8 billion light years worth of space to reach us. With this knowledge and the Hubble constant, we achieve an observable universe with a radius of 46.6 billion light years, or 93.2 billion light years wide. I've covered a lot of topics very briefly in this video, some of which are huge topics on their own which I plan to cover sooner rather than later. In the next few months, I will cover dark energy and the Hubble constant in greater detail. And opting to skip details about our own solar system in this video, as I feel our beloved stellar home deserves an entire series all to its own. This was my very first video, and I thought it would be a great introduction to the many science topics to come in the future. If I've made a mistake, 
if you've got some tips or you just don't like me, please let me know in the comments so I can make better videos for you. Thanks for watching. Hit like, subscribe and become a Patreon supporter, but only if you want to. You don't have to. It does help out the channel, but if you're lazy like me, I completely understand. Einstein used to say that boredom is a great tool for developing your imagination and creativity. If you have the time to waste because you didn't click a hundred buttons, then maybe you're contributing to the world more than you think.